And here is the Writer's Almanac for Wednesday, the 17th of November, 2021. It was on this day in 1558, Queen Elizabeth I ascended to the English throne, the daughter of Henry VIII. He had broken with the Catholic Church to divorce his first wife and marry Anne Boleyn, who gave birth to Elizabeth, whereupon Henry VIII had Anne Boleyn beheaded and declared Elizabeth an illegitimate child. So when Henry died, Elizabeth's half-sister Mary Tudor came to power. She tried to turn England back into a Catholic country, but she died just five years after she became queen, and Elizabeth took the throne. 1558 on this day, she was 25 years old. She restored England to Protestantism, but against the wishes of militant Protestants who wanted her to seek out secret Catholics and prosecute them, Elizabeth said she was not going to police anyone's private beliefs. And what was more important for us, Elizabeth eased the restrictions on the legal operation of theaters, so there was a whole new career for writers, Marlowe and Ben Jonson and William Shakespeare. And it was a time of relative peace and prosperity, so people had the luxury to read books and go to the theater. Elizabeth reigned for 45 years, and near the end of her reign, she said to her subjects, though you have had and may have many mightier and wiser princes sitting in this seat, yet you never had nor shall have any that will love you better. It was on this day, 1973, President Richard Nixon spoke to a group of managing editors, Associated Press Convention, and said the word, I am not a crook. He was referring to questions of whether he had underpaid his income taxes, but he also got questions about the Watergate break-in. He denied any knowledge of the break-in and said publicly that his former Attorney General John Mitchell had told him nothing about the break-in or the cover-up, which was later proved to be untrue. And by the following summer, the House Judiciary Committee had approved articles of impeachment. And it's the birthday of the novelist and historian Shelby Foote, Greenville, Mississippi, 1916. He'd published several novels when, in 1952, an editor asked him to write a history of the Civil War. And Foote set about doing it, thinking it'd take him four years. It took him 20 years, three volumes, about one and a half million words. Shelby Foote said that writing a history of the war was like swallowing a cannonball. Here's a poem for today by Walt Whitman. As toilsome, I wandered Virginia's woods. As toilsome, I wandered Virginia's woods to the music of rustling leaves kicked by my feet, for it was autumn. I marked at the foot of a tree the grave of a soldier. Mortally wounded he and buried on the retreat easily All could I understand, the halt of a midday hour, when up no time to lose, yet this sign left on a tablet scrawled and nailed on the tree by the grave. Bold, cautious, true, and my loving comrade. Long, long I muse, then on my way go wandering, many a changeful season to follow, and many a scene of life. Yet at times, through changeful season and scene, abrupt, alone, or in the crowded street, comes before me the unknown soldier's grave, comes the inscription rude in Virginia's woods, bold, cautious, true, and my loving comrade. A poem by Walt Whitman, as toilsome I wandered Virginia's Woods. That's the Writer's Almanac for Wednesday, November the 17th. Be well, do good work, and keep in touch. 